Hello, welcome to Movie Moments. Today, I'll be narrating a movie titled The School for Good and Evil, released in 2022. You ready? Let's go! The movie opens with two brothers, Ryan and Rafal, sparring out like they usually do. The two are keepers of the balance between good and evil in the fairy tale world. The sparring is a time they enjoy together until Rafal decides to use the opportunity to end his brother, claiming he wants to rule both good and evil. What happens next? We'll find out soon enough. It's years later and we're introduced to a beautiful dream of a girl named Sophie, who wishes to be like Cinderella, living the fairy tale life. And in reality, she is actually Cinderella, without the actual castle or Prince Charming. On the other side of town lived another girl, Agatha, with her mother. They are believed to be witches and thus scorned by the entire village. With their not-so-happy lives, the two girls couldn't find better comfort elsewhere than with each other. They became best of friends, as is the closest thing to a happy ever after for them. The girls are out in town and constantly bullied by the townspeople, so they look out for one another, for though they might look tough, they are actually scared little girls. They both pay a visit to a library. They're both readers, but Sophie would rather read fairy tales unlike Agatha. While digging through a pile of books, Sophie picks out a book about Cinderella with an emblem of the school for good and evil. The librarian tells them that some people believe the school to exist, claiming a girl named Leonora disappeared from the town, probably taken by the school. She was never seen again and no one knows where or if the school exists for sure. While Agatha finds it ridiculous, Sophie asks if they accept students since she just saw her one way to get out of the town. She further writes a wishing note to be admitted into the school and then goes to their favorite spot which is called a wishing tree and sticks her note into the tree trunk. What she doesn't notice is a strange presence watching her. Sophie has made up her mind whether or not the school comes for her, she leaves the town. Agatha begs her not to leave her alone in that town. She promises not to leave but later that night, she sneaks out of the town and Agatha finds her. While they're talking, a strange mist appears and drags Sophie away. Agatha grabs onto her and it draws both of them to an open field. Sophie is excited but Agatha is scared. Next, a strange bird jumps out of the bush and takes them both. Agatha grows scared by the minute but Sophie enjoys it saying she wished for it. She tells Agatha not to worry, the bird will take her back after it has dropped her in the school of good. But the bird drops Agatha in the school of good and takes her to the school of evil. Sophie is dropped together with some new students into dirty water and the welcome party is far from welcoming. She tries to tell them she doesn't belong there but they drag her in anyway. Agatha, on the other hand, wakes up in a beautiful garden of roses to find some princesses staring at her. They think she's from the school of evil, judging by her dress. Agatha does not have their time. She wants to find a way to the school of evil to get her friends so they can go home. Sophie manages to find the dean of evil school, Lady Lesso, to complain she does not belong there. The woman calls her a reader. That's what those from the human world are called, and it rarely happens that a human is chosen to attend their school. Agatha also struggles to fit in. She's already offended fairies. She also finds the dean of good school, Dovey, who tells her Sophie can't be there because she's a never and those of them in the good school are the evers. She's dressed up like a princess to join the other students at orientation. At the orientation, Sophie and Agatha see but aren't allowed to meet since they belong to different schools. Sophie takes a sudden interest in Prince Tedros who already has a fan base amongst the girls. Agatha, on the other hand, is not smitten by his charms at all and that seems to interest him. The girls speak up to the schoolmaster and he says there are no mistakes in the school of good and evil. Later that night, Agatha sneaks out of her room to go find Sophie. Sophie, on the other hand, is having a hard time with her roommates. Agatha runs into Cupid, who tries to shoot her. She jumps into a room just before it gets to her. There, she overhears a conversation between the deans contemplating about them, the readers. They think the schoolmaster may have made a mistake and dropped the girls in the wrong school. As they leave the room, a strange mist appears which is Rafal to warn Agatha to stay away from Sophie, saying she belongs to him. Agatha rushes to evil school and finds Sophie. Her plan is to find the schoolmaster and plead their case to him. Inside the headmaster's tower, they hear a voice narrating every action they make. They find out it's only a magical pen writing about them. The headmaster tells them the pen is the story 
librarian responsible for writing fairy tales and it has chosen them as the next tale to be told. He also says they cannot leave nor be changed from their schools because once the storian has written it, only the storian can change its course unless the person in question gets a true love kiss. While the girls agree to find Sophie a prince to kiss, they wake up and it's like none of that ever happened. Sophie and Agatha find it even harder to keep up with their classes. Agatha learns that if you get three fails, you get turned into an object or animal forever, giving her more reasons to want to leave the place. Agatha has a little chat with Gregor, a prince who also wishes not to be there. Sophie later joins Agatha and tells her she's chosen Tedros to be her true love, but Agatha thinks she shouldn't since a rude princess has her eyes on him. She doesn't listen and hands Agatha a letter to deliver to him. Agatha has a nice conversation with Prince Tedros later that day and hands him Sophie's note. She meets Gregor during class in Blue Forest. The boy complains he failed yet another class. He can't seem to stand what the teachers say and gets startled when a rose bites him. Gregor runs away and Agatha follows him to stop him because of what she heard about those who fail. Because he doesn't listen, he's taken away by a mist while Agatha stands there watching helplessly. Sophie has an altercation with a student, which gets the girl so mad she decides to teach Sophie a lesson. Sophie calls out for help and a swarm of bees come to her aid. Turns out the bees are a fall. He commends her on the good work she's doing. Lady Lesso is so shocked to see him, she drags Sophie aside and tells her not to tell a soul. She also says with what she just saw, she's convinced Sophie is right where she belongs. In class, Agatha is angry and curious what they did to Gregor. The teacher tells her to ask no further, it's the way things are done. She tells them of a wishing fish that grants them their deepest desires. While others wish for Prince Charming, Agatha wishes for home for everyone. And that wish reverses a spell which reveals the wishing fish was just another student who failed and was turned into a fish over a hundred years. She thanks Agatha for freeing her and then fades away. Immediately, one of the strange birds approaches Agatha. They all try to run thinking the bird is there to kill her. Agatha soon realizes the bird is Gregor, her friend. She tells him she's not sure she can help him as well. Tedros jumps in and stabs the bird, killing it instantly. This infuriates Agatha, who gives him a punch to the face. Dovey tells her she's the first true princess she has seen in a long time and now comes convinced Agatha is right where she belongs. Sophie and Agatha meet up later. While Sophie asks about Prince Tedros, Agatha thinks they should leave the school, kiss or no kiss. Tedros joins the girls and Agatha walks out on them. While Sophie and Tedros talk, Sophie is taken away by security for talking to a prince. She's taken to the doom room where Lady Lesso waits her. Lesso cuts her hair and asks her to choose a side, warning her that she will not stand aside and watch her ruin Rafael's plans. Agatha confronts Tedros for doing nothing when her friend was taken away and implores him to open his eyes to see that all is not as it should be in the school. Sophie, on the other hand, is devastated. She lost her beautiful hair she adores so much. Rafal comes to her and tries corrupting her mind. The next day, the students are gathered in the hall for a ceremony where they all get their powers. Sophie is nowhere to be found and Agatha is growing restless looking for her. Prince Tedros is concerned and tries to talk to Agatha about what happened. Looks like someone's catching feelings. While they line up to get their fingers pricked to activate their magic, Sophie shows up in style. If you're gonna be bad, at least look good at it. Sophie tries to get Tedros' attention by looking cool and truly he's distracted whenever he sees her but Agatha thinks she's not gonna win him over that way so she decides to help. She tells her to prove to him that she is good because he will not choose a girl based on appearance, not after what happened to his father. Sophie takes Agatha's advice and with her help, the two get close in no time. So close the two schools can't stand their relationship. To prove they're truly in love, the schoolmaster suggests a trial by tail, which means both of them would go into the blue forest by nightfall on opposite sides and fight whatever danger presents itself and find each other before dawn. They're both given a red cloth if they wish to drop out. They should drop the cloth and they'll be transported to safety. Sophie walks into the bush of biting roses thinking they're just mere flowers. They attack her and she runs away. Then she bumps into a scarecrow which tries to kill her. Agatha can't bear hearing her friend scream so she goes in to help. With her magic she transforms into a bird and helps Sophie. 
they hear Prince Tedros call out to Sophie. She tells her to run to him. When he saves her, they should kiss so they can leave the school. Agatha hides and watches. The Scarecrow attacks Prince Tedros and during the fight, he loses his sword. Agatha tells Sophie to pass Tedros the sword but she hides in fear. Agatha decides to help instead and the Scarecrow is killed. Agatha explains she came on her own when the prince thinks Sophie cheated. He then realized Agatha came knowing Sophie wouldn't help him. Disappointed, he drops the cloth and vanishes. Sophie gets angry at her friend for ruining her chances and then leaves her out in the woods alone. That's when she sees Rafal in the woods. Agatha gets home to be confronted by Dovey. She tells him she saw Rafal in the woods and Dovey is shocked at the news. Agatha sends Sophie a message and Rafal yet again tries to poison her mind. He succeeds this time as he passes on his blood magic to her. Meanwhile, Dovey calls the teachers and confronts Leso for not saying anything about Rafal. The schoolmaster walks in and tells them Sophie is missing. She sends them off to find her and tells Agatha to bring Sophie to him the moment she finds him. Lady Leso finds Sophie in the library and is shocked by her appearance. The blood magic is making her ugly. Sophie mocks Lady Leso who was once the chosen one to carry out Rafal's plans but she wasn't good enough for him. She also knows she is from her town, the little girl Leonora of Garvedon who went missing. Meanwhile, at the ball, Tedros confronts Agatha of being so defensive and supportive of Sophie when she doesn't appreciate it. She replies that Sophie is her family and the only one who has always stood up for her. After listening to her talk, he realizes she's the one he's in love with. Just then, Sophie walks in looking raggedy as ever. Agatha is worried for her friend but she is angry thinking Agatha came to the ball with Tedros. As she leaves, the students discover their teachers have all been turned to dolls. Tedros says they should find and put an end to Sophie. Agatha tries to stop them because the code is evil attacks, good defense, and Sophie hasn't attacked. But of course, they don't listen. The good school attacks first, thus causing a reverse spell, where good turns to bad and bad to good. Sophie and her school, who are now the good, defend themselves and just like that, they start killing each other. Sophie goes in search of the schoolmaster while they fight. Agatha follows her. Sophie arrives and discovers the schoolmaster is Rafal. Turns out evil defeated good at the beginning of the movie. He disguised as his brother all these years and corrupted good from within. Rafal says the tale is about them and claims he is her true love. Sophie believes him and gives him a kiss. Now evil has won true love's kiss, condemning both schools to perish forever, giving Rafal power to reign. Everything in the fairy tale world begins to collapse. Sophie complains she never wanted this. She thought he wanted evil to win and not kill everyone. Agatha jumps in and confronts Rafal. Rafal tries to kill her but Sophie jumps in and takes the hit. With Sophie dying, the spell is reversed and everything returns back as it were. While Rafal is distracted, Tedros tries attacking him but Rafal is no fool. He almost kills Tedros but the girls intervene. Sophie uses her magic and transports Tedros' sword to Agatha who uses it to end Rafal for good. Sophie apologizes to Agatha and dies but only for a minute. Agatha's tears brings her back to life and the school is back as it were. Well, not exactly. The deans are surprised to see their students getting along and believe they can exist as one. Sophie and Agatha have found a way back home. Sophie tells Agatha she can stay with Tedros she will go alone. Agatha is delighted. She rushes to Tedros and gives him a kiss, but then says she must go with her friend. As they walk through the portal, Tedros tries to stop her. The girls wake up under their favorite tree. They return back to their families who welcome them with open arms. But some things never change. The villagers still hate them, but with a little magic, they have an edge now. As the girls walk away, the portal opens as Tedros' bow pierces through it, calling out to Agatha. The end. Comment your thoughts on this movie. Also, like and subscribe to the channel. Tune in for more movie moments.